I'm Dr. Jose Hoglar, I'm a professor of internal medicine at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. I'm an electrophysiologist and chair of the writing committee for the 2023 uh, guideline of atrial fibrillation. As you know, there, there was a 2014 guideline, so um, on the management of patients with atrial fibrillations, and there have been an update since then, but in view of the advances in technology and so many new things that we can do for patients with okay. atrial fibrillation, as well as so many new understanding on um, treatment, uh, ways to treat and uh, technologies and new science on prevention, et cetera. The Joint Committee on Guideline Development decided it was trying, it was time to get a full guideline. Those the scope is a full um, guideline that covers the entire spectrum of the management of patients with uh, atrial fibrillation from prevention to lifetime interventions to rhythm control, rate control, and special populations, for example. So there's a lot, uh, a few important changes. Um, one is that we created a new classification for atrial fibrillation, and, and the purpose was to emphasize that atrial fibrillation is a complex disease. Um, atrial fibrillation is not just a rhythm abnormality, but it's just a manifestation of a, comple um, a complex substrate. Thus, uh, we emphasize the importance of a um, multidisciplinary approach to atrial fibrillation management from uh, prevention, lifestyle, um, and risk factor modification, lifestyle changes, and of course, uh, rhythm management as well. Uh, when it comes to rhythm management compared to the prior guideline, there have been some updates that are quite important. For example, catheter ablation of atrial fibrillation in selected population is now a class one recommendation. In the past, the prior guidelines advised to do catheter ablation, for example, after the patient had failed pharmacological therapy, and that is not uh, required anymore, especially in patients who are deemed to be um, good candidates for the procedure. We also um, 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 upgraded the catheter ablation in patients with heart failure due to depressed left ventricular systolic function, also to a class one indication in view of recent data showing the, um, the benefit of this procedure in this specific population. We have um, upgraded the use of watchman devices to a class 2A recommendation in view of um, um, more recent data. And, um, also, over the years, like I mentioned before, there have been a lot of changes. One of those changes is the devices have become safer to implant, for example. Um, we also uh, change a little bit in the way we advice uh, on anticoagulation instead of using a specific score, we use a uh, magnitude of risk for the decision to anticoagulate or not. Those are some of the most important changes. The key recommendations, um, uh, we emphasize uh, the importance of lifestyle interventions and um, risk factor modification. We um, Elevated catheter ablation to class one recommendation in selected population. Elevated catheter ablation to a class one recommendation in patient with heart failure. We use, uh, also change to magnitude of risk when we make recommendations on anticoagulation. We also um, open the discussion for uh, using other scores when deemed necessary. Uh, for example, the most used score is not enough to calculate risk in specific populations such as those with renal disease, for example. Um, we also have other things, uh, for example, the management of atrial fibrillation in the setting of um, hospital illness, for example. Well, when you talk about strategies, we have um, applications uh, with a guideline uh, tool you can open the guideline in your mobile device, in your in your portable phone, for example, and open an access recommendation. We wanted to make sure that this guideline provide um, all the essential recommendations for managing patients with atrial fibrillation across the board, across the entire spectrum. Those we not only includes those essential recommendations we talk about, 
but we also include a lot of recommendations for more mundane things, like for example, when to stop or not anticoagulation patients undergoing surgery, monitoring of anti drugs, um, you know, management of uh, complications related to bleeding and other things like that. So, so we we so we're talking about strategies. We have an application. Um, we're making the recommendations also to stand on their own so they can be uh, easy to read at the point of care. So uh, we're hoping that the public and the medical community uses these uh, these guidelines uh, because we made it easy to use um, with these applications. 